All the political talk in Ottawa is about the throne speech, but little noticed is a bit of news that might be a bit more important given what we're dealing with throughout the world right now. That is the global coronavirus pandemic. In the middle of the world's worst pandemic in a century, two of the top people at the Public Health Agency of Canada have suddenly departed. Sally Thornton, the woman who was in charge of the National Emergency Strategic Stockpile, as well as the Global Public Health Intelligence Network, she just retired. A week later, Tina Namiowski, who's the president of the Public Health Agency of Canada, announced that she's retiring, resigning. She's been appointed to be a special advisor to the prime minister now, and a man named Ian Stewart is taking over. I want to have, bring in Tony Clement now to help me break this down because, uh, Tony, um, for people that forget because you've been in politics a long time, early on in your career in politics, you were Ontario's health minister during SARS. You were then the federal health minister around the time the public health agency was getting off the ground. So you know this setup well. How worried should we be about all these changes at the top when something major like this is going on? It's very unusual, Brian, to have these kinds of changes in the middle of a, of a national crisis, which is the pandemic, of course. So uh, it, it leads me to, to do a little bit of speculation because I I'm not on the inside, but it, it either means that they needed some management change that was kind of a top down decision by the Privy Council office and the prime minister's office to, to get some uh, better management uh, on phase two of the pandemic. Or alternatively, uh, those two individuals uh, felt that they were not being listened to by the center, as we call PMO and PCO, and uh, they just couldn't take it anymore. So either of those things is concerning, uh, but uh, certainly it's very unusual to have uh, some of your top management leave in the middle of a crisis. Uh, when I texted you about this and said, can you comment, your initial reaction to me is it, it'd be like... Uh, uh, Churchill quitting after Normandy. I mean, we're in the middle of the battle now, aren't we? Indeed we are. And uh, we've always thought that there would be a phase two or a second wave. And it seems like that that is a possibility. Uh, the good news is, as you know, that uh, the, the mortality rate is much lower than phase one. But at the same time, you know, it, it creates shockwaves through the economy, disrupts lives. So this is not the time that I would usually... Uh, decide, oh, we need some changes in management when you're in the middle of this crisis management already. You and I have talked before about the National Emergency Strategic Stockpile. That's, you know, the area that Sally Thornton was in. Um, didn't know at that time about the uh, Global Public Health Intelligence Network. This is an outfit that had been around since 98. It's, you know, was brought in in the Cretchen era went through the, the short Martin era, went all through the Harper era. And my understanding is this organization would send out regular bulletins. Uh, hey, uh, over in this country, something's happening. We need to watch it and be prepared. And it wasn't just used by Canada. This, this helped the entire planet try and spot these things. Well, I remember at, at my time as Ontario's Minister of Health and also as Federal Health Minister relying on that network. So, and I would get bulletins, certainly during SARS, it was part of, 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 of our intelligence gathering. And uh, certainly as federal health minister, we would receive these bulletins and it would get kicked up to me if there was something of, of particular note. So it's, uh, that's something that you need. Uh, it's something that gives you the on the ground knowledge of what's going on. So very curious again, why that institution is not uh, up to snuff. Okay, so then help me figure this out. You've got these two very important core competencies of a public health agency that are suddenly greatly diminished. Um, you know, the initial reports uh, on the uh, Public Health Intelligence Network said, oh, it was disbanded. Oh, they said, no, it wasn't. But, you know, they, they weren't uh, doing things quite the same way. I've seen reports that many of the doctors were put on studying the hazards of vaping instead of looking for pandemics. The National Emergency Stockpile uh, greatly reduced from being able to uh, backstop the provinces to having only a couple of weeks worth of PPE. And in fact, Thornton saying that that wasn't even their job to have PPE. To me, that looks like people at public health got bored with doing their real jobs and looked for other things to do. Yeah, I, uh, I'm glad you framed it that way because that was gonna be my comment that there's, uh, here's the problem. 
both at the WHO, this has been a problem for a couple of decades now, and at, at the Public Health Agency of Canada, what I would call mission creep. Uh, and it's 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 partially their responsibility, but it's also the responsibility of the politicians who keep piling on new agenda items for the public health agency. We want you to tackle obesity. We want to want you to tackle vaping and doesn't give them the resources in addition to what their core competency is supposed to be. And so all of a sudden, when there's a crisis, when there's a pandemic, they don't have the resources in place. That's exactly what happened at the WHO, and it's happening at Public Health Agency of Canada as well. You have worked in the past with Ian Stewart in uh, different uh, departments, when you were industry minister, when you were at Treasury Board. He doesn't have a, a public health or science background either. He used to head up the National Research Council, but that doesn't mean he has a science background. He's a public administrator. Should that be concerning or, you know, what, what's your sense of, of the new guy in charge? Yeah, I, I, as you said, I've known Ian uh, through my uh, respective roles in cabinet. Uh, I've found him to be competent. I've found him to be on top of the files. So that actually does give me some comp uh, confidence, Brian. But again, uh, a, a public servant like Ian is only as good as the leadership and the political management. So you look to the health minister, you look to the prime minister. So uh, they've got to give the better direction. Uh, I, I don't think I, I think we can find some fault in how they initially responded to the pandemic. Uh, look, it's a, it was obviously caught everybody by surprise, but uh, you look to leadership to respond quickly and resolutely. And uh, so now that we're in a phase two, which everybody predicted would happen, uh, I believe that they have to step up their game. Both Prime Minister Trudeau and Patty Hyde do have to step up their game. All right. Tony Clement, former health minister, at provincial and federal level. Thanks so much for the time. For sure. All right. You can leave us a note. You can tell us what you think. Comment down below and share this on Facebook, Twitter, or email it to your Aunt May in Whitby.